a pleasure to be here with you and uh, I'm sure most of you know me here. I've been interacting for the past uh, one day and it has been a great day yesterday. I think it was absolutely lovely to interact with people after so long, especially we were here last time in 2019 and uh, I never thought, uh, I mean during the pandemic we never thought that we will ever be able to come back again and meet face to face. So it's, it's a great pleasure and it's a great honor to be with all customers and colleagues back. Um, <clears throat> we had a very good, we had very very interesting and intriguing sessions yesterday wherein we looked upon how the workforce management uh, comes into picture, where it can be utilized properly and some very very interesting topics where uh, some of the people asked whether you know the uh, workforce management experts would just go away and just the technology will take up, take it up and you know everybody will be just washed out. I, 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 frankly for me I don't think that will ever happen. We will still need people, we will still need brains to run the Ferrari that we have and uh, you know people will always be in demand on the workforce management side. That's also my personal opinion. So okay let's change our gears a little bit. We have been talking about WFM as a service, WFM as a practice. It's a well oiled machine, it works very well with the ACDs, the contact center has been using it for ages. Um, but today we are going to look at a topic, I thought let me just take this topic and you know bring it to the attention of the audience here. Uh, looking at WFM in a little different perspective, what more we can do with it. And one of the areas where I think it has a great potential and we are just scratching the surface there is the back office piece. The back office is, I mean, just to define what back office is, it's something where you don't have people who are customer facing, right, and face directly facing the customer. They're sitting somewhere in the back and they are doing something for the customer, but not directly. Uh, but the problem is, if they do something wrong, the contact center guys would have to face the front of it. Because if, for example, your telco bill, Airtel or Vodafone, if somebody in the back office does some mistake in the bill, the first thing the customer is going to do is he's going to pick up the call, pick up the phone, or maybe some channel and talk to the agent, right, and say some good words. So we've all been there, right? So that's the kind of circle it goes in. So that drop off is very critical from a customer experience perspective, but I think it's pretty important as well. So that's what it is back office. It refers to functions that are directly, not directly facing customers uh, and it's normally non-phone based work like transactions etc. Now mind you I am not talking about email and chat here. Email and chat still comes under the what we call as non-voice criteria. Not fully back office but non-voice because it still may have some stringent SLAs and you know very closely related to the contact center. Now it's very important to have a kind of a comparison between a back office and a contact center. I would say they are similar, but they are different. So let's try to look at some of the comparisons between a contact center and a back office. So in a contact center, what happens is everybody is in a mic under a microscope, right? Every agent is monitored, every call is monitored, what we call it as a from a cradle to a grave. When did the call come in? Whether it got abandoned. When did it reach the agent? How soon did he pick it up? And what not? I mean, so many different parameters of the call coming, of the interaction coming in is measured. The agent is measured up to the rim. He is, you know, productivity is of prime importance in contact center. Whereas in the back office, the guy comes in at 9, he's working. Of course, there's some bit of measurement, but it's not up to that level as a contact center. Secondly, in forecast, I mean, in case of a contact center, we need to forecast for service level in seconds, right? 80% in 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 100% in these seconds, in seconds. Whereas in back office, is obviously more deferable work. One transaction comes in at 9, it needs to be finished by maybe uh, 5, 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. or the next day. So it's, it's more, you have more time to finish that transactions or that work item. And there's a multi-step workflow in back office. It means one work, there are different work types. There can be different work types which a person can do, right? He can do loans, he can do mortgage, he can do 
different different work types. Something similar to a skill in contact center, but a little different than skill. So it is a multi-step. So if one type of work gets over, then it moves on to the second work type, then it moves on to the third work type. So there are multi-steps to finish one transaction, which is not the case in a call, right? A call gets over, it gets over. Maybe the next time the same call comes in, but it's a new call in a contact center. That's the big difference. Third is scheduling employees to meet contact volumes per interval. You're measuring per interval. Whereas in back office, it's more of a type of work and the SLA that you're going to meet probably in a day or two days. Next is intraday tracking of the service level and abandoned rates. There's something called an abandoned. Of course, we all know in the contact center, somebody calls in and the wait time is long, you just hang up, right? That's abandoned. Something like this never happens in a back office. Somebody sends out a request, it's gone. You can't pull it back, right? It's gone in the queue. And that's where it sits. It keeps coming, it keeps sitting in the queue. And the backlogs keep getting piled up. So there's a concept of backlog in back office. And then there are terminologies. There are different terminologies used in contact center like contacts, abundance, agents, whereas in back office it's more of work items, backlogs. And they don't like to be called agents, they like to be called associates or employees or whatever. I mean, it's, it's just a naming convention, but it is different. And data from ASD is like interval, volumes, AHT, whereas from, in, in case of back office, this is very complex. It can be very, very complex at times. There, there is data coming in from multiple different sources. One employee working in multiple systems to finish one transaction. It's very common in back offices. And that adds to the complication. And of course, there is very high engagement of the employees. There's so many programs running in the contact center to engage employees, to motivate them, to you know, give them pump up and take more calls and do better customer service. But in back office, it's just there. I mean, you're supposed to do your job. That's it. So these are the basic similarities and differences, I would say, but still they're comparable. And that's what I would like to start off from. Okay, so this, here are some statistics from Insight Partner. Um, the back office workforce management market, it's a big market. About currently it's at 3.6 billion dollars, and it's huge. And it's expected to grow to uh, 6.71 by 2028. So by workforce management market, it means everything, not only workforce management, but other solutions as well, which actually complement the uh, back office market. So it's a huge market, it's still, people are just scratching the surface as I said, it, but it has a huge, huge potential. That's what I believe. Okay, so let's look at some pain points. What are the challenges in back office? With respect to workforce management, there are many other challenges, but we concentrate majorly on the WFMPs of the back office. Why can't we apply the same concepts that we have in contact center to a back office? What are the challenges we need to solve there? So the first thing is, back office productivity data is difficult to capture accurately. This is the biggest challenge. And obviously, uh, no prizes for that, but since the back office data is spread across multiple applications, that's the reason it is difficult to capture bits and pieces and combine them together. Some back offices may be very, very complex to measure how many transactions did a person do in a day. It may be difficult. And it may be difficult to measure it accurately. So that's one of the big criteria. Second is managers and supervisors, they often use manual reports, collect data from here. They have one guy who's collecting data from multiple places, collating into one, and manually sending productivity data to the managers. And we have seen quite a lot of conflicts where the Employee says that, no sir, I did this much, but the report says something else and there's a lot of such back and forth happening, right? So, I see some people smiling there, so I think it's a very common uh, practice. <coughs> okay, and the visibility change grows exponentially. People started working from home, right? That multiplies the problem. Earlier in the office itself, you were not able to measure it properly. Now, people have started working from home, which adds to the complexity of multiplies this problem many, many fold, especially for back office, right? So that's important. And of course, how to keep the 
the employees more energized, how to keep them engaged, how to keep them motivated is obviously a challenge. Difficult to capture volumes 100 times as I mentioned in real time. So this, these were a few uh, challenges that we, as per our experience, we saw among the back office. There can be more, but these were the prominent ones that we feel are the biggest ones that we saw in the, in the industry. Okay, so this is a great site to be. Uh, we have a new digital workforce management suite which is powered by Machine Learning 2.0 for digital. This is our solution, the award winning nice IEX as we call it, IEX WFM solution. It, it has right from long term planning which is called the e-schedule planner. My colleague there Nadia is going to present the long term planning uh, session, she has it tomorrow. And of course we have the end to end suite which consists of forecasting with uh, AI, forecasting, scheduling with ML, robust uh, intraday management and real-time adherence for managing and giving wings to the workforce management solution suite EEM that is automating the intelligent automation with for intraday and self service So we have the whole suite for you. The same suite work, works for front office as well as back office and that's what gives you the big advantage that you can have best of both worlds, right? And you can have a comparison, you can have cross-skilling, you can see which or how people are performing in the back office, how they are performing in the front office and maybe cross-skill them if needed. So there's the same solution with same extra features for back office and front office using AI for forecasting and ML for scheduling. It applies to both. And of course, uh, needless to say, we have won many awards for the solution. Of course, the Gartner, you can Google it for the past 13 years. 12 years we have been market leaders in PNG and me personally I have been proud of this one. We won the 2022 best practices product leadership award by Frost & Sullivan for India. The best Indian software for workforce management, nice WFM. I am really proud of that. Yeah, so uh, coming back to the topic with respect to uh, uh, back office. Uh, in, the, in the contact center, it is like a well oiled machine, as I mentioned. You have the ACD, you have the Amazon Connect, or you have the Cisco's and the Avaya's, and they are directly feeding it into the WFM software. They are feeding in volume, standard times, and the real time data stream. It's pretty simple. They've been there, we've seen this, and it's pretty standard. And then you generate forecast schedules and do, the, do your thing normally. But in the back office, it's difficult, right? What do you do? So in back office, uh, many organizations have their own, they've developed something on their own which captures some bits and pieces from uh, different systems, it collates into one. Either you can have that system or NICE also has a product, it's called desktop analytics, which can actually capture desktop activities. It can capture desktop, just a client loaded on all desktops, it's capturing the applications being used, etc. Capturing login log over time, it's doing all of that stuff, and it's also capturing activities, activities, of, and you can define transactions that you know. This transaction is from here to here, and then this is one, this is two, this is three. So it keeps capturing that, keeps capturing volume, handle time, and it basically that's how it will give you reports. And then we have direct integration into IEX into Nice WFM, and that's how the ACD piece works. But mind you. This is, in back office there are two parts to it, one is handled and the other is offered. So offered is something which comes from your workflow system. So it's like I offered you 20 but you have handled 10. So this is the handled part. To calculate backlogs you also need the offered. If, uh, of course the system will still work if you don't have the offered but if you have that you will be able to calculate backlogs. That's what is important there. So this is what is desktop analytics. We of course, um, okay. Let's imagine you have a back office. You have none of it. You don't have your own method. You don't have your own developed tools. You don't have nice. Um, probably you need a small component from nice, but you don't have anything. So the crudest way of capturing back office data. That is the crudest way. I know there will be some flaws, but can be corrected is our nice WFM, the nice WFM solution itself has a method in which the age, the employees, they themselves can enter how many work items they did, did they do in a day. 
It's part of the WFM system itself. You don't need anything extra. At the end of the day, the employee can say, I did 20, I did 15. All of them can just enter it in the system. It will flow down. And there's something called a time standard. Wherein the administrator, he can say that this type of work normally takes two hours. So just put two hours, three hours. Just put in time standards for all different work types. And there you have your volume and handle times without any integration, without any big projects to take on. So it's right there at the basic. For real time, this is what you do. Just have a component from NICE. It's called application analytics, which captures what the person is doing on the desktop, which application he is in, whether it's a productive application or non-productive application. And that gets flowed into NICE WFM with items completed, process length, and employee state. With this, you can forecast, schedule, and track. So this is the most basic part, most basic, and you don't need frills for this. Very easy. You can make it, this is the basic, you can make it a little more advanced with the nice desktop analytics solution feeding into WFM doing the forecasting scheduling. You can have the product from NICE or you can have your own solution integrated feeding into NICE WFM. If you already have built something like this. So we can do that as well and we can give you our solution as well. It depends on what you need. But most importantly, this it has to feed it into WFM with accurate data. That's pretty, pretty important. Okay, so these are some of the screens that I just wanted to show you how the solution looks like. It's able to capture which person uh, is actually doing what. What is the scheduled activity in nice WFM versus what is his actual state. You can see this in real time for back office. That this person, he was supposed to be working, but his actual state is something non-productive. So if you double click that agent, you will also be able to see the state of his. You will be able to see what exactly he is doing on the screen. I mean, we don't want to monitor him exactly to the point, but we just would like to know whether is a person doing what he is scheduled to do. Something similar to a contact center, right? We do that every day. Okay, so that was about you know the basics. Now let's try to understand what are the advantages that you get if you deploy workforce management to the back office. The first is obviously you get your volumes accurately. You get your volumes, you get your forecasts, and you get your capacity plans in a better way, which obviously help you manage your SLAs better and have a better customer satisfaction. The second is obviously you will have efficient scheduling. <coughs> efficient scheduling will actually help you save cost. It will help you utilize your resources more accurately, more properly in a back office. Currently, it may be all over the place. So you'll be able to optimize that, save costs, save FTEs uh, with proper optimal resource allocations. Um, thirdly, projected backlogs, as I mentioned, we need the workflow tool to fit in, fill in, and you'll be able to calculate backlogs and reduce overtime if you have that in your back office. Raise productivity. This is the most crucial piece, more to raise productivity in back office. But unfortunately, you cannot increase or raise productivity till the time you measure it properly. So you have, to measure, you have to have accurate measurements based on which you can have raised productivity. And engaged and motivated employees, it's so important. So important to have energy and so important to have motivated people in, uh, in the back office as well. And obviously increased customer satisfaction meets service levels. This is all what we strive for, right? <coughs> or whatever we do. So this is pretty, pretty crucial. Now I'm not just saying some of these things. This is, the rubber has already hit the road. We have customers who are using it. We have Teleperformance Brazil who is using it, uh, using the solution and here is the impact. They actually have managed to increase productivity by 12% in back office. It's huge. It's huge. Even 2-3% increase in back office productivity is something It's absolutely enormous. So, uh, it's absolutely great. They have shift adherence increase. They had employee engagement increase with transparency. And of course, they improved their effectiveness in real time workload uh, changes and disruption. And the, the solutions manager had some good things to say about us, so I just put that there. Yeah, so that's all I have to say. I just summarized whatever I said in this one single slide. The key takeaways of this uh, session was firstly, the back office WFM market is growing at, a, at an enormous pace. Again, I'm saying you just scratch the surface. There's so much to do in there, but nobody wants to touch it because it's very complicated. But it has a huge potential, let me tell you that. 
Second is um, capturing accurate back office data to feed in into WFM is very critical. Need to capture data with justification, with proper, you know, you have all the documentation and evidence to show that yes, this is what you did and you can actually justify that in front of the board or anyone. That's the most important critical piece. Because as we all know, all having WFM professional experiences, WFM it's like garbage in, garbage out, right? You need the proper data to come in so that the tools and the algorithms can do their job properly. That's pretty, pretty important. And finally, NICE is uniquely positioned to help the back office WFM challenge. That's all we are here for. Thank you so much for your patience. If there are any questions, I'd like to address them now if anyone has any. Yes.